thank you everyone for coming online. Um, again, we like to run these masterclasses because sauna is such an amazing health tool. And a lot of the time, um, people have questions. People want to learn more. People want to learn how they can integrate into their day to day. And, um, that's what this is all about. Help answering any questions you guys have and, um, hope you guys get the most out of your sauna uh, because it's such an amazing health product. So, um, yeah, thanks for coming online. Thanks for chiming in. Um, before I get to the questions uh, and thank you to everyone who did send through the questions. Um, I just want to cover a bit of a, some health fundamentals really that have been coming up recently. Um, I've been coming across a fair few sick people recently and heaps of stuff going on, pain meds, constipation, acne, like just a whole myriad of things. Um, I mean, we all have stuff going on, but recently I've come across a few people that have got quite a few things going on, quite a few old stuck emotions inside of themselves and um, just in a real need for healing. And it always kind of comes back to fundamentals for me. Um, I talk about fundamentals all the time, but what's the stuff that we are putting in the body and doing with the body? Um, because whatever we've been doing, if we're dealing with some sort of chronic illness, whatever we've been doing has gotten us to that point um, or whatever we've been ingesting or coming into contact with or moving or not moving. Um, and so what are those fundamentals? We talk about them all the time here at Eye Health Saunas in the office. Um, we've got such an amazing staff here. We've got people fasting regularly and always eating healthy. And we had a really long standing employee recently um, quit smoking, which was amazing, massive step for him. And that's, that's what it's all about. Um, those little changes we make in our health end up being a really big snowball in years down the track. So that was really cool to see. But it's always about fundamentals. So what food are we putting in? Are we hydrating correctly? Are we moving the way that we should be moving? Are we sleeping enough or focusing on our sleep? Uh, are we getting sunlight? Are we doing things that we enjoy? And you know, is this <laughs> working? Is our mindset right to make these changes or to actually want to live um, healthfully? And so I just wanted to touch on those. Um, firstly, if we start with food, a, a lot of things that come up here in this line of business is arthritis, fibromyalgia, chronic inflammatory conditions in the body, and just inflammation in general. We're all kind of sore here or there. We've all got little niggles and things that just won't go away. And any form of inflammation is the body just trying to heal. There's a problem, and so the body sends inflammation there to help actual, actually heal. Maybe it's a knee that has an issue builds up with all of this inflammation, all of these inflammatory markers. That's actually our body trying to heal uh, whatever's going on there. Maybe it's chronic dehydration of the joint and therefore um, the inflammation gets sent in there to help deal with that. And I was watching a documentary yesterday called Game Changers on Netflix, which is all about eating vegan and everything associated with that. And there was a really cool stat, which I just caught at the end, which was when people move from eating a traditional diet, which includes meat and vegetables, and then move to just a vegetarian vegan diet, um, something like 30% of their inflammatory markers in the body, oh, the, the inflammatory markers in the body reduced by 30%. And that's just one stat, but the idea there is when we move to more fruits and vegetables, um, we're giving our body what it, um, what it needs to help heal and to help reduce inflammation in the body. And I've seen many, 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 many stories where people move to plant-based whole food diet and they have over time gotten rid of their arthritis or their chronic pain that they've had for some amount of years. Um, and so what we put in is really important. If we just go whole foods as much as possible and, and minimize some of that meat, I know it's very, uh, not a lot of people like to hear that, um, but we don't need to be going super heavy with the meat every single day. And uh, when we move away from that, we see that inflammation in the body uh, tends to decrease. So um, if there was one thing we could do with the food that we're putting in, um, just eat more whole foods, less processed foods and, and reduce the amount of um, meat, not completely to zero, don't want to tread on anyone's toes, but um, especially if we're dealing with pain, that, that, that stuff makes a big difference. 
I certainly noticed in my life I was recovering faster when I stopped eating meat. But anyway, we digress. So food, super, super important. Keep it clean, keep it fresh, um, and keep it in its whole food form, not in like a packet, not in like a something that's been ground down into a powder. The, the further we get away from the original food source, the, the less um, beneficial it is for the body and the harder it is for our body to process. Um, so keep that in mind. Then we look at hydration. I've done a whole masterclass on hydration, pretty passionate about hydration, but the long and short of it is, chances are we all need to be drinking a little bit more water. Um, they say for every 22 kilos of body weight, drink one liter of water per day uh, before exercise. So I weigh 66, 67 kilos. It's like three liters of water I need to be drinking to stay hydrated, not including exercise. If I'm exercising, it's more on top of that. And that's super, super important. I mean, there's so many books out there on the importance of hydration. A really good one is Your Body's Many Cries for Water, where Dr. Batman Gellidge pretty much goes through every single chronic condition and explains how a lack of hydration has um, a really big uh, role in leading to things like heart disease, diabetes, arthritis, um, reflux, all these sort of things all have some sort of relation to dehydration at, at the core of them. So if nothing, just drink some more water. Um, another way to think of this is yeah, we get dehydrated if we don't drink enough water, but we also get dehydrated when we eat the wrong foods. So if we're eating really dry food like corn chips or something, we don't want them coming out the other end going <laughs> coming out the other end the same consistency they went in. Right? So our body has had to use hydration to make that happen through the colon, getting hydration in there to get those corn chips out. And so that takes hydration from the body. And you can get quite specific. Um, I think our I always forget the stats are always different, but whether it's 80 or 85 or 90% um, that our body needs to be at a hydration level, um, any food that's less than that is going to take hydration out. So that even includes things like bananas, um, even avocados take a bit of hydration out of the body. They're sitting around 70, 75% um, water content. And if our body needs to sit at 80%, then um, some of that water needs to go into that food to clear it out. So. Keeping that in mind, whenever we're having sakatas or corn chips or bread, that's gonna take hydration out of the body because we need to use that hydration to, to clear it out when we go poo. So um, keeping those things in mind are also important when we're looking at hydration as well as caffeinated beverages and those kind of things. And from my experience, if, if, if people just start to hydrate and they start to eat better, um, <laughs> their health is going to change over a period of time, obviously not immediately. Um, so the other fundamentals we talk a lot are about sleep. One of the questions tonight is about sleep. I'll get into a bit more then. Um, but the main thing for me here is treat sleep like other areas of your health. So everyone's aware that we need to eat well and everyone's aware that we need to exercise. And most people are pretty aware they need to drink more water. Um, and therefore they put a certain focus on those things in their day to day. Oh, I'm going shopping or I'm going to buy my food for the week or I am... Um, I'm going to exercise, cool, I need my gym gear and I need some water and um, I'm going to go and do that thing. And then we do our day when every, the craziness that's in our day and then we just get to bed and we're like, oh, okay, sleep time. And we haven't really put any focus on sleep and therefore 48% of Australians, according to the University of Adelaide, aren't getting a good sleep. And... So for me, there's lots of stuff we can unpack on how to get a better sleep, which I will later. Um, but if we just put some focus on sleep, right? So maybe two hours before bed, okay, I'm going to be sleeping soon. What do I need to start to do to optimize my sleep tonight? What can I do between now and when I go to sleep? So having a bit more of a focus on sleep and not just brushing it off as, oh, I don't sleep, you know, whatever, and then just do your day and, you know, just suffer from, from bad sleep. Um, having a focus on it then allows us to say, okay, what are some more things that I can do? So then the others, um, obviously movement, just get moving. I think we're all pretty good here in the Eye Health Saunas tribe. We all understand the importance of movement, um, but just being aware when we're not getting enough movement. I'm going to Gold Coast tomorrow and I'm not gonna get a chance to exercise tomorrow and I didn't get a chance today and I'm like, oh, I totally could have planned that better. Uh, because 
now I'm not really going to get much movement in. I mean, I'll be walking around, but I'm not going to get a chance to sweat or to really get deep into my joints and just move around, you know? Um, so having that as part of your day is super, super important. Uh, we have all these joints. We were designed to move. We're the best movers on the planet of any species. In whatever way we need to move, we can do it. We can get into things, out of things, on top of things. We're designed to move and making sure that we are moving each day is super, super important, as we all know. So I won't keep banging on about that. Um, and then some little things, uh, or big things really, um, making sure that we have that, that sort of mindset and that understanding of if I need to take action on something, to take action on it. Um, yeah, everyone around the office hears me banging on about that at the moment. But um, if we know we need to do something, um, now is the best time and especially with your health, um, because more often than not, health is like sixth or seventh priority in our lives and it never gets put first. We never make the changes we need to make now and then we end up in our 30s and 40s and we've got issues or 50s or 60s. And so the time to make change in your health is is now um, and having that, that mindset is super, super important. Anyway, Tony Robbins can do a much better job of explaining that than I can, but um, it kind of comes before everything else. I mean, you can know all the health knowledge in the world, but if you're not doing it, um, do you really know it? So um, having that mindset. And then lastly, um, just getting out in the sunshine, um, super touchy topic in Australia, but um, even just getting out for five or 10 minutes, getting some sun on the skin um, into the eyes, if nothing else is gonna help balance the circadian rhythm and get our hormones being released at the right times based on where the sun is in the sky because that's how we kind of evolved in nature based on what the sun was doing and therefore what our body needed to do in conjunction with that to survive. So just going out, getting some sun. Um, if you're inside all day, I unfortunately at the moment uh, am inside most of the days. So I'm out in the morning getting that early morning sunlight on the skin and in the eyes, that's where the receptors for light are and that's gonna, signal and start a whole bunch of different mechanisms in my body in the morning and then throughout the day i'm just trying to go outside to keep in tune with the sun and then obviously there's the vitamin d aspect and everything like that if you have fair skin just don't go out for too long um, if your skin's a bit darker you can stay in the sun a little bit longer if we're eating well and eating lots of foods with lots of antioxidants then that's going to help our skin protect itself from the sun um, as always i would try and avoid sunscreen unless completely necessary so anyway if we're doing all of those things we're getting out in the sun we're staying hydrated we're eating well we're exercising we're fo focusing on our sleep and we have the mindset to change something if we have to um, amazing stuff is going to happen uh, personally i'm transitioning into eating raw at the moment and even from just doing that eating raw twice a week um oh, sorry twice a day um, just doing that having the mindset to make the decision to do it now i'm experiencing changes in my health and so if we just change little things in all of those areas with a bit more focus, um, from my experience, some amazing things happen. So anyway, I'm chewing all of your ears off. So we shall get into the questions. Um, if at any time you have any questions, feel free to post them in the chat as we go. So. Da -da 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 -da. John and Gail from Marubna. Hello. That sounds far away. <laughs> I hope you're both well. And um, I hope you're enjoying your sauna too. Okay, here we go. Uh, hi, it's Lani here. I have, I've had open rotator cuff shoulder surgery three weeks ago. Ooh, that sounds um, deep. <laughs> uh, I'm still on pain, pain relief tabs, tablets, I'm guessing. Um, is it okay to sauna now or should I wait? Um, it's hard to say. I'm not sure what pain tablets you're on. Um, there was it, uh, was it Tony? Lani. Hey Lani. Um, I'm not too sure what pain tablets you're on. Um, generally if they're kind of on the stronger side, uh, like a Panadine Fort or above, um, I would kind of steer clear from the sauna until you're down to something a bit more mild, like, like a Panadol. Um, there have been some cases of people with those really severe pain patches um, where the sauna increases the uptake of, the, of, of those pain medications into the body. 
um, and we don't really want to do that. We don't want to put <laughs> any unnecessary stress on the kidneys more than what they already have to deal with. Um, and certainly not on the nervous system or anything like that. So if they're really heavy um, pain meds, I'd probably steer clear of the sauna until you get down yeah, to something like a Panadol or a Nurofen. In which case, um, yeah, sauna's okay. Again, listen to the body, um, see how you feel. Uh, if you're in the sauna and you're feeling a bit lightheaded, make note of the temperature, open the door, drink some water and um, just stay in touch with that. In terms of the sauna for recovery for that surgery, um, the sooner you can get in there, the better, as I suspect you were thinking as well. We're gonna get that heat into the, into the skin, into the muscles, we're gonna increase our circulation in that area, and we're gonna help with recovery, get the oxygen in, in there, you know. Um, by increasing the circulation, we're giving our body more of a chance to get all of the nutrients and blood circulation and oxygen into the area to help with that recovery. So any increase in circulation is good. Infrared sauna is a really great way to do that. Um, so obviously get in the sauna as soon as you can, but just be wary with the um, pain medication there. I'm not sure what you're on, but if it's on the stronger side, I'd... Um, with a side of caution there until you're back down to something a bit more uh, regular. Is that the word? <laughs> Should pain meds be regular? Anyway, I hope your shoulder um, is healing well. And um, yeah, if you have any further questions, you're welcome to shoot me an email at alex at ihealthsaunas.com. Thank you, Lani. If you have a sauna and take medication, another medication question, um, approximately one to two hours before, will, you, will your sweat eliminate the effectiveness? Linda. Hey, Linda. Um, I think what you're asking there is if we take meds, um, medication, will the sauna sort of reduce the effectiveness? Um, hmm. That's a hard one for me to answer, I think, because I'm not a medical doctor. Um, I'm not sure what, what medications you're talking about um, specifically. I could understand perhaps something like um, like vitamins, which are just going into the blood, perhaps um, could be pushed out through the renal system. In terms of medication, it'd be hard for me to say. Um, you're welcome to get in touch and, and be a bit more specific. Um, it depends on how quickly the body uptakes the, the medication, um, how it's regulated, how it's passed out of the system. Um, yeah, hard for me to say with that one. Um, so welcome to get in touch. Mm. Yeah, and again, if it's pain meds, I'd be steering steering clear um, if they're heavy pain meds, but I'm not too sure about that one. Uh, would it be safe to use a steam inhaler while the sauna is in operation? If so, any recommendations, Malcolm? Hey, Malcolm, um, hope you're well. A steam inhaler in the sauna, I'm not sure. I'm not actually sure exactly what you're talking about there. Uh, I'm aware of um, like salt inhalers, um, where it's like a thing of salt and you're basically breathing that in. Um, the salt helps clean the air is the idea there um, and get some negative ions into, into the lungs. Um, with a steam inhaler, um, yeah, I've, I haven't come across a steam inhaler. Um, I guess, if it's just an apparatus and you're not sure whether you can use that in the sauna or not, you can definitely bring um, any form of thing in the sauna. Uh, this sauna's on at the moment. I've got my, my bottle here. Books and things and phones are all okay. Um, if it's a steam inhaler and I'm guessing there's like a long tube or something, um, then you can definitely bring that in. Uh, I'm just trying to think why why would want to be inhaling steam? Um, maybe I've missed something important. Um, but yeah, I'm not too sure about that one. Um, again, maybe if I look it up really quickly, I wonder what we'll find. Can I do that? Might not be able to do that. Here we go. Yeah, okay, Vic steam in there. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, I guess you could bring, I guess you could bring those in there, um, and yeah, it should, it'll work fine. I mean, the infrared's designed to heat the body; it's not designed to heat um, other things as much. So, 
um, you can bring that in there. Um, I don't see why not. If you're diluting something in the into the inhaler, um, I would suggest trying like an essential oil as well, um, and just doing that on the hands. And these ones here um, can be quite nice. Again, not too sure why um, why using the steam inhaler there, but um, in terms of a device like that, what it looks like from a quick Google search um, is yeah, you, you shouldn't have any issues bringing that in. Um, so, good question there. Um, next one, I'd love to hear your protocol for an evening sauna session to help with sleep. Karina. Ah, Karina. It's like my favorite question. Um, I'm just really passionate about, about sleep uh, because I think it's an area where a lot of us make a lot of mistakes and there's some, so many simple things we can do to help with sleep. Um, so first of all, if we talk about the sauna session itself, evening sauna, um, so I'd be having the sauna in there in the evening, obviously, if you're having it after dinner, um, just be aware of what the dinner is. I once had a sauna after a bunch of rice and I was like drinking water and rice and it just, it was like this big thing <laughs> moving around. It was, it wasn't very comfortable. Um, so just obviously don't have a very um, big dinner. Um, certainly not a dehydrating dinner. You don't want to have like a pizza and then jump in the sauna. Um, so maybe like a soft, uh, soft leafy green, simple salad or something like that could be quite nice because then you're getting some hydration in um, from that salad as well. So then we jump into the sauna. Now in the sauna, we don't want to work the body too hard on a sleep session, right? So I'm not sure what you're comfortable with, Karina, but I, I wouldn't recommend going above 50 degrees maybe 45, 50 degrees. We wanna go a little bit longer than normal. So maybe 40 to 45 minutes. If normally you're in there for 45 minutes, go 50 minutes. And that's just gonna get a nice, deep, slow sweat happening. No, we're not gonna be sweating instantly, but that's okay. We don't wanna get the body into a state of like, oh, I need to do something. It just needs to be like a slow, cruisy sweat. It'll build up over maybe 20, 25 minutes. And by the end of that session, you're feeling really relaxed, really calm. The nervous system's being calmed down by the infrared, having a nice sweat. All right, so we don't wanna work anything too hard in that session, 45 to 50 degrees, 40 to 45 minutes. And we wanna stay hydrated, obviously. Now there's all the extra stuff. So in terms of sleep, typically I'm recommending a color like the red. I know it looks like orange, I've got a light out there, but it's red. Um, and reason being is, if we're out in nature, uh, the last color that we would see from the sun, the last um, frequencies of light that we would see from the sun are red and infrared. And what that does is that signals to our circadian rhythm and our circadian rhythm is basically our bodily rhythm. I'll just leave the red on. Basically our bodily rhythm, which signals um, to our pituitary gland when to release certain hormones within the body. And when our circadian rhythm is is set and in check, um, then we start to release melatonin at a certain time in the evening. So if we use a red color light in here, it tells our brain, hey, it's the end of the day, because typically we're used to seeing red at the end of the day. It's time to relax and it's time, it's time to start to release melatonin. So if I'm doing a sauna session in the evening, I've got this red light on and typically I'll actually dim it down a bit so it's not too, not too intense. Okay, so it's it's red, it's there, and everything gloomy, you know, if you can turn the lights off outside the sauna, great, um, or the whole house, <laughs> right? So we've got the red light on, we're not going too hot, we're nice and calm and relaxed. I'd bring in a peppermint essential oil or a, a Roman chamomile, if that's what you're into, and I'd have that uh, in the cabin, in this, just pop it in there, if you've got one of those, I'm not sure what sauna you have, Karina. And yes, yeah, so lavender, Roman chamomile, red color light. And then when we're coming out of the sauna, we don't want to be jumping into like a cold shower or even like a really hot one. We just want like lukewarm. This whole session's about like calming, relaxing, easy, not pushing too hard, right? So come out, lukewarm shower, towel off and take it easy. If you want to have a, a chamomile tea after that, beautiful. If you don't like the taste of chamomile, 
there's plenty of good <laughs> to just have chamomile because it's really good. Um, there are some good sleek blends of teas as well. Um, I typically like the Puka one. I've used that a few times. And so a nice tea like that afterwards can be quite nice to transition from the sauna into bed. And that's pretty much the sauna side of it. When it comes to when it comes to the other things we can do around sleep, um, light um, is really, really important in the effects that it has on the body. So like I was saying with the circadian rhythm, if I've got all of the lights on in the house, bright, you know, white light like this, and I've got the TV on and it's loud, <laughs> I've got blue light coming from the TV, which tells my brain it's daytime. I've got blue light coming from the LEDs in my house, telling my brain it's daytime. I've got loud noises, which stimulates me. So even just light in the house can play a massive role on sleep. The science shows that if you spend one hour looking at a device, which I'm looking at right now, that's gonna delay my release of melatonin by three hours. That's why I wear these here blue blocking glasses. Um, so these actually block out the blue light coming from the screen and Therefore, it's not triggering my brain to think, hey, it's daytime, wake up, be stimulated. It's just allowing, <laughs> we're going green, are we? Yeah, let's go green. It's just allowing um, my brain to do what it wants to do without being affected by this screen. So no screen, screen time for at least an hour before bed. Turning off half the lights in the house, like just turn them off, there's no need for them to be on. Um, if you do need some light, I would recommend just a salt lamp. They're a really good way to bring in some ambient light into whatever space you're in. And what else? What else? No screens. Some nice tea beforehand. Um, some, sometimes people find that after they sleep, they wake up fairly soon. And that, uh, that can often be a drop in blood sugar. We have a drop in blood sugar. Our body says, hey, blood sugar is low. Got to wake up and do something about that. Um, increases cortisol. And then we kind of wake up maybe an hour or so after we sleep. So um, ha having some sort of slow release sugar just before bed, uh, like a honey. Or even some people find oats, although I'm not a big fan of that before bed. But something really slow release. Um, we can just pop some honey under the tongue. And we can also put some, um, some salts on there to help calm our nervous system as well. Um, you can actually combine the two, so like some honey with some salt under the tongue, like half a teaspoon of uh, a honey or a teaspoon under the tongue. It's going to help balance the blood sugar throughout the night and calm the nerves as well with the salt. Um, some people find this really, really powerful. Um, what else? Exercising during the day it goes without saying. Um, if we work hard, then we need to recover at night time and sleep is pretty much the most powerful way that our body can recover. So our body therefore says, well, I've worked hard. I need to, I need to get a good sleep tonight. And that's one thing. Caffeinated beverages, obviously, um, tss, coffee has like an eight or a 12 hour, um, half life in the body. So after eight hours, half of the coffee you had that morning is still in there. So being aware of that, if you are going to have a coffee, have it as early as possible, try and delay any other caffeinated beverages throughout the day. Also having big meals before bed. Um, digestion uses more energy than any other process our body does or ever undergoes. So if we have a big dinner before bed and then we just go in bed and it's just sitting in there and I've been guilty of this, it's just kind of sitting there and you're like, why am I going to sleep? It's like, cause your body, it can't optimize this for sleep because if you fall asleep and this stops working, it's going to cause a whole bunch of digestive issues more so than the digestive issues you may already have at that stage. So um, not having a big meal before bed is um, definitely recommended for sleep. So I guess all in all, no <laughs> minimize caffeinated beverages, don't have a big meal before bed. Um, doing the sauna as you were doing, turn off most of the lights in the house, stop using the phone um, or the TV or the laptop at least an hour before bed. Um, some honey and salt under the tongue before you go to bed and maybe even diffusing some of that lavender or Roman chamomile essential oil in the room that you're in or put it on the, um, on the pillow or under the pillow. And so you're just creating a space. And like I said at the start of the masterclass, thinking about sleep as it's a thing to sort of 
do well, I guess you could say. And so if we're saying, okay, I'm going to be in bed in two hours time, um, what do I need to start to do now to prepare for that? All right, I'll start to turn some of the lights off. We're going to diffuse some essential oil in that room. Um, I'm going to eat now <laughs> instead of then. Um, all these things. So then when we're getting to bed, we're sort of, our body's kind of ready. Um, that would be my suggestion on sleep. And I found if you kind of do all those things, um, our sleep tends to improve, which is lovely. So thank you for that question, Karina. One of my favorites. Okay, next question. I'm just going to grab some water. Okay. I want to get an air purifier, negative ion generator for the sauna. Most stuff these days is made of plastic. Combined with the heat in the sauna, the off-gassing could make the toxins worse. Um, I'm no expert, so it could be wrong. I uh, love clarification and maybe recommendations for the purifier if it is in fact usable in the sauna. Thanks, Alex. That's from Peter Pierce. Hey, Pete, how are you? I hope you're enjoying your sauna. Um, okay, air purifier, negative ionizer. Uh, right off the bat, I don't have any recommendations. Um, there's a pretty cool guy called uh, Don Tolman, and he does a whole piece on uh, air purifiers. And from from his research and his understanding, long story short, the best way to purify the air is to just move it with a fan. Um, compared with like some of the most expensive oxygen ionizers and things in the world the fan is often the best to help clean the air and purify the air um, the way that they spin and something to do with the way that the air hits the blade that's why there's always the dust and the positively charged ions and and particles are on the back of the blade that's why it builds up with dust and not my area of expertise uh, but this guy's a bit of a god when it comes to natural health and wellness and that's kind of what he had to say on that so for me, I'm just always trying to move the air in my office or at home. I have a fan on the roof. Most nights I'd like to have it on. Um, at work, every single day it's on. First thing I do is I come in and I turn it on and I move the air. Um, there's that cool story about what what's what's a canary in a coal mine really? And it was when they were, you know, when the miners would go into a new area in a cave or a mine. Um, they'd break through a wall and then there'd be a whole pocket that was kind of just stuck in the ground and then they open it up, there's all this dead air and the canary would actually die first because from oxygen deprivation or from the dead air. Dead air means it's not electrified, we breathe in air and we feel energised because we're actually breathing in electricity and when they would want to re-stimulate that air they bring those big fans in and moving the air three meters re-electrifies it. So um, doing the same in our home or at the office with the normal fan is probably probably what I would recommend. That's what I do. And it definitely makes a difference when there's a fan on or off. In terms of air purifiers in the sauna, um, yeah, I can't really recommend any good ones. If you find like a small sort of compact one, that you want to bring in there uh, just keep it on the floor that way you're going to minimize any heat kind of getting into it if you're concerned about those um vocs from the plastics um so yeah i hope that kind of helps um if you have one that you want me to take a look at i'm more than welcome for you to send me through a couple links um if you are wanting to just get the air purified in the sauna as much as possible leave the door open blow some fresh air in and um maybe put some peppermint essential oils in here um, yeah, or go with the air purifier. <laughs> um, yeah, cool. I hope that helps, Peter. Okay, any chance of an internet app or add-on to allow us to remotely turn on the sauna when not at home? Um, yeah, soon. <laughs> uh, we can't, or we have yet to get the to get the app super solid where we want it, where we're happy to um, launch it to everyone. So um, it will happen, um, just not yet. Um, so thanks, I didn't get the name of that person, although I think I know who it was. Um, and okay, what else? Is it okay to lie down in the sauna? Felicity, hello Felicity. Uh, is it okay to lie down? Yeah, it's okay to lie down. 
I lay down. I've got this nice big one now, so I lay down in here. Um, not all the time though. And I'm always super conscious of what am I feeling? Is this right? Is it not? I wouldn't recommend going really, really hot in the sauna for like a decent length of time and lying down for most of it um, because your body's kind of going to optimize circulation for whatever plane you're laying in, you know, if you're laying down or if you're sitting up. And some nasty stuff can happen if you are laying down, you get used to that and then the sauna ends the session and you're like, oh, okay, cool, it's time to get up. And then you get up and you go out the door and then you're like, whoa, because you've just kind of gotten up quickly and your body's been working on a horizontal plane. So in that sense, yeah, just, just be cautious um, of lying down Felicity. Um, just stay in tune with your body, see what it's telling you, see um, if you need to sit up or, or not. Um, if you have the space though, it is nice to lie down sometime. Um, but yeah, just, just stay in check um, with yourself. Don't overdo it. Um, I do find when you're lying down, you feel like you can go hotter. Um, so just be aware of that. Um, if it's hot enough for you when you're sitting up, then you don't need to change the temperature when you're lying down. Um, but yeah, get comfy in the sauna, get creative. Um, I've been doing some pretty weird postures and things in this sauna since I've had it. So um, yeah, happy sauna to you, Felicity. Um, I think we've got one more. <laughs> Does anyone have any tips on protocols for healing? I normally do 60 minutes, 60 degrees. Any tips and suggestions would be lovingly received. Raquel, I think Raquel, you added to that on the chat, uh, sorry, on the Facebook group about, um, I think it was about thyroid and liver you were hoping to detox. Um, yeah, there's heaps of books on that medical medium. I'm sure you've read, he gets into those things. Um, but for me, it's always about fundamentals. Uh, like I mentioned at the start of this chat, um, if we live a life which is sort of optimized for health over time, that's gonna help us clear stuff out. From my experience and from some of these healthiest guys in the world that I follow, um, Tyler Tolman, Don Tolman, Lauren Lockman, these guys are all into fasting and they all have amazing uh, amazing stories of people who come to fast with them and clear out things which just aren't supposed to be clearable. And so I guess without being the fasting expert, although I do a bit of fasting myself, yesterday I, I did a, a cheeky um, one day water fast, which was nice. And yeah, from, my, from what I've seen, I would recommend if you're clearing or cleansing or wanting to heal anything, the fastest way to do it is to fast ideally on water um, juice fasts are an easier way to get into the practice of fasting but yeah like i'm talking i'm talking diabetes i'm talking any gastrointestinal issues i'm talking any form of heart disease people with serious cancers and things some amazing stories coming out of extended fasts um, so yeah, that's kind of, for me, that's kind of where it's at in terms of healing, regardless of what it is, um, fasting will help you do that. Now, if fasting isn't accessible or you work a lot and fasting and work don't kind of go hand in hand, you don't have the time, just making those changes into, in, in, in the day to day, um, moving whole food, plant-based, making sure we're hydrated, try and stay moving, using infrared sauna, detox. Don't push your body too hard when you're in here. You can get the benefits of 55 degrees, 50, 55 degrees. Um, get in the sauna and, and yeah, just build those, those healthy fundamentals into your day to day. Um, that's going to help. And, and, and then I guess between just the day to day and fasting, um, raw food, I'm a big advocate of raw food. Um, so yeah, <laughs> whole food, plant-based, uncooked, um, alive food, food that is still in its original structure from nature, ready for our consumption, um, all the nutrient content available. Yeah, raw foods, it, it can be challenging to, to eat more raw foods, um, but yeah, that's where a lot of the healing can happen too. So I hope that helps. And that's pretty much it. Somehow I've gone 44 minutes. Um, that's great. 
I hope you've all got some benefit. Um, no one's written anything else. Excellent. Um, happy saunering in the meantime to you all. Um, as always, if you have any questions about your sauna use, please feel free to get in touch. Alex at iHealthSaunas.com. And yeah, keep using the sauna. Keep getting in there. Stay hydrated. Eat well. Best wishes to you all. And um, it's been a pleasure. Thank you for gifting me your time. Um, everyone's time is precious. And so I'm very grateful for you all to have spent 45 minutes with me. I hope it's been really helpful and um, it's an absolute pleasure delivering this info. So thank you guys. I'll see you later.